In Baltimore, the Archdiocese is now apologizing after a Maryland Attorney General's investigation and report alleged there is widespread and repeated sexual abuse of more than 600 children. The report named 156 Catholic clergy members and others of the horrific abuse and cover-ups, not just the abuse, it's also the cover-ups that happened for more than six decades. Uh, this is a full accounting. Uh, there are details of repeated, tortuous, terrorizing, uh, depraved abuse. CNN's Gene Casares is tracking all of this coming out of the new report. I mean, this report, I was looking at this yesterday, it is staggering. It 600. is staggering. We've seen it in other jurisdictions, Boston, I covered Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and now Maryland. This report, it was just released by Maryland's Attorney General, and it alleges sexual abuse of at least 600 children Jeez. over six decades, beginning in the 1940s. That abuse would have been committed by 156, at least, clergy members, from priests to deacons to teachers, others employees of the archdiocese. The report alleged how victims, they were plied with alcohol and drugs, and then they were coerced and forced to perform sexual acts. I want you to see exactly from the report. It says, from the 1940s through 2002, over 100 priests and other archdiocese personnel engaged in horrific and repeated abuse of the most vulnerable children in their communities, while archdiocese leadership looked the other way. Time and again, members of the church's hierarchy resolutely refused to acknowledge allegations of child sexual abuse for as long as possible. Now, 13.2 million has been given to 303 victims at this point since the 1980s. The money is going for counseling and for settlements. Many alleged victims were too late here because according to the civil statute of limitations in Maryland, victims have no recourse if they are over 38 years old. The report cites why they didn't come out sooner. Some wanted their parents to pass on before they would come forward. They didn't want their parents to know what they had endured. And by the time they did that, it was too late under the law. Others just didn't admit it, wouldn't acknowledge it, and others had repressed memories. That's heartbreaking. I mean, because you, you talk about the settlements that it's going to counseling and whatnot, but you, you can't, money doesn't fix that. Yeah. yeah, it was an amazing investigation in that they would go to old journals and find handwritten ledgers of, of priests and, and other personnel with the church. And it's amazing what they have put together, but much more to do. And an issue now in Maryland's statute of limitations. Yeah. Stunning. I, I really just don't know what to say when reading Could at, it at least 600 children. It's just And it's the victims, you know? It's the victims. What yeah. that does to someone's life forever. You can't fix that with you money can't. or anything. Yeah. Right. No. Do you, do you think it could bring about a change in the statute of limitations? What does that look like? Well, it happened in New York, right? Yeah. Because New York uh, developed a law passed by the legislature so that for one year that there would be no statute of limitations and people could come forward with their cases. And I covered the Kevin Spacey case mm -hmm. in uh, downtown New York City, and, and that was based on this law right there. But it's, it's challenging because memories fade, people pass on, the, the older the case is, and it's very difficult to prove. Mm. Yeah. All right, Gene. Yeah, Thank we'll you. continue to follow that for sure. Thank you, Gene. Appreciate it.